This video is the second part of Lecture 4a in the series on Ancient Greek Art. It briefly highlights some of the architectural achievements of the Archaic period, while reviewing vocabulary that will also be useful later for viewing architectural sculpture. The geographical sites we'll visit in this lecture include Pestum in Magna Graecia, Ephesus on the western coast of Anatolia, and the island of Aegina by Athens. We will remember that the two major stylistic orders, the Doric and the Ionic, developed in the last century. To review, each order is immediately recognizable by the capitals on the columns. The Doric column has a simple, almost cushion-like capital called an Echinus, while the Ionic column features a more elaborate capital with volutes. The Doric column has no base and sits directly on the stylobate. The Ionic column has an elaborately carved base as well as a more ornate abacus. The Doric shaft has 20 flutes with sharp arises. The canonical height is seven times the diameter at the base. The Ionic order is lighter and more slender with 24 flutes separated by broad arises. The height is eight times the base of the diameter. The horizontal section that sits on the columns is the entablature, which consists of an architrave, frieze, and cornice. The frieze is the most prominent part of the entablature. The Doric frieze features alternating triglyphs and metopes, while the Ionic frieze is a continuous band. Both metopes and continuous friezes would be decorated with relief sculpture at this time. The pediment is the triangular shape created at the ends of the pitched roof above the entablature. You might also remember that many architectural elements were painted, and so Greek buildings would look very different from the pristine marble neoclassical buildings of the post-medieval era. You'll also want to keep in mind the basic plan of the temple. The first thing we notice is the peristyle or colonnade that surrounds the inner structures. The peristyle sits on a flat surface called the stylobate. The stylobate is not at ground level. Instead, there is a substructure or steps leading up to the stylobate. This is called the stereobate. The enclosed temple core is called the naos or cella it would house the cult statue. The front porch is known as the proneos, and the back porch is called the opistodomos. The overall plan of the temple is, of course, rectangular, and in canonical Doric temples, the flank columns number two times the number of front columns plus one, so six across the frontier and 13 down the long sides. A great example of a Doric temple in the Aegean is the Temple of Aphia at Aegina, erected around 500 BC. Aegina is an island close to Athens, and Aphia was a local goddess. The temple is built of limestone and originally had a stucco finish. You'll note from the columns that the temple is Doric, but it's not strictly canonical since the columns number six across the front and 12 down the side, rather than 13. Also, their height measures 5.33 times their lower diameters instead of seven diameters high, which would be canonical. The interior had superimposed rows of Doric columns on each side, forming a two-storied colonnade. From this time on, which is really the end of the Archaic period, the two-storied interior colonnade became part of the Doric canon. Some of the pediment sculptures survive, which we'll look at as beautiful examples of Archaic architectural sculpture in Lecture 5. While the Temple of Aphia exemplifies the Doric order, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus illustrates the Ionic order. You'll note that the temple is aptly located in Ionia, that's to say Western Anatolia, since that's the region that gave its name to this style. Unfortunately, the temple no longer survives in any form. The archaic temple was built around 560 BC after the original temple on the site was destroyed by a flood, 
and itself was burned down in 356 BC. At that time, the temple to Artemis was rebuilt in even larger dimensions and became one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. All you can view today are the bare-bone ruins of the magnificent 4th century temple. The 6th century temple that concerns us in the Archaic period was already gigantic. Even the grandiose classical era Parthenon is only about 60% of the size of this temple and about half the size of the 4th century replacement temple. The columns of the Archaic temple were about 12 times as high as the width of the column's base diameter, making their appearance particularly thin and elegant. The temple was reputedly the first in marble. Marble can be found throughout the world, but it is particularly abundant around the Aegean. The architects for this project appear to have been the Cretan Chersiphrond and his son Metegenes at the expense of King Croesus of Lydia, who had just seized these Ionian Greek territories. You know the king's name from the expression, rich as Croesus. One of the earliest and best preserved Doric temples dating to about 550 BC is from a town close to Naples in Magna Graecia. Pestum, as the Romans called it, or Posidonia, as the original Greek settlers called it. Pictured in the background here is the Temple of Hera, known traditionally as the Basilica, since excavators initially thought it was a Christian church. The closer temple, dating to the 5th century and even better preserved, was believed to be dedicated to Poseidon, then Hera, at which time it was called Hera II, and now Poseidon again or possibly Zeus. The 6th century archaic temple to Hera is not canonical, with nine columns across the front and 18 on each side. There is also a row of columns at the center of the naeus. The shape of the columns is noteworthy. This bulging in the middle with tapering at the top is known as entesis, and following from this western prototype became a regular feature of Doric temples throughout the Greek lands. Also archaeologically discovered at the site was an altar in front of the temple, typical of the open-air placement accessible to worshippers. This is an aerial view of the two temples, and beside it, a picture of yours truly in front of yet a third temple at Pestum dedicated to Athena. And this concludes Lecture 4A, Part 2.